Today we're going to crank along together to make this ribbed sock. And this is the same method generally as the simple sock on the dinabean.com website. Uh, this simply adds the ribber. So you might want to go ahead and crank one of those socks first, just so you're familiar with the general method. We're going to start with the cuff. In this case, it'll be a one by one ribbed cuff with the Juana selvage cast on. Then we're going to transition to three by one rib for the leg, do a pre-heel section. And then this is a short row heel with wrapped needles. And the foot, the ribbing continues on the top of the foot. And then we have the same kind of toe as we had for the heel, the same method. And then we'll learn to Kitchener the toe shut. This is meant to be a crank along, so I hope you'll grab your supplies and join me. Let's get started. For supplies, you're going to want 100 grams of sock yarn, which is about 400 yards. Uh, fingering weight sock yarn works best on the Dina Bean sock machine, and we always recommend 20% uh, nylon. You're also going to want some waist yarn in a sharply contrasting color, but about the same weight. So again, if you have a thin sock yarn or um, project yarn, you're going to want a thin waist yarn as well. You'll need eight stitch markers, four per sock. You'll need a set of weighted heel forks. Tools that we always use, of course, include a setup bonnet, but you can just use a scrap tube of knitting if you don't yet have a setup bonnet. You'll need a set of soft weights. I have a heavy, medium, and light. I mainly use the medium and on the 2.0 machine, just under two pounds, I find to be the most ideal with a cable ring, of course. And then from this set of tools, I have the loom tool, which is a little less sharp. I have a pick tool, which is very sharp, a latch tool, uh, some darning needles. I always, always keep my screwdriver nearby, a pair of tweezers for picking up drop stitches. And then it's often handy to have some weighted clips. I also like to keep my yarn winder nearby so that after you crank your gauge swatch, it's easy to wind the yarn back up and go again. For measuring gauge, I like to have a piece of paper and a pencil so I can trace my foot or whoever's foot I'm making the socks for. But I also like to print out a copy of the worksheet that comes with the sock pattern. And so you can just trace on the back of the worksheet if you want. And then again, you'll want a ruler to measure. And then I also like to have two stick pins nearby and you might want a soft tape measure to measure around your foot. Today, I'm using a 60 needle compound cylinder. You would use whatever size works with your particular yarn to get the width of the tube that you're looking for. And then remember to have your ribber stop in the machine. If you're using the compound cylinder, it's the smaller one, of course. And if you're using the Tuttle cylinder, it's the wider one. Remember this end gets installed right above the bolt connection that has the X on it. And then you'll also need your ribber all set up with the correct dial for the cylinder that you're using and make sure you have your ribber needles nearby. Before we get started with our project, I wanted to make sure we're oriented the same way as I'm sharing directions. And these are the same ones that we use in our written patterns. So I think of the machine itself as a clock. So 12 o'clock is up here. I'm right in front of the row counter. And I get this question a lot. I mean on the part of the camshell that does not move. So people often ask if the, the 12 o'clock is on the cylinder, but of course the cylinder moves. So that's hard for me to wrap my head around how 12 o'clock would keep spinning around. So for me and in all of our videos, 12 o'clock always means right here at the top, no matter what's happening with the cylinder. So then six o'clock is down here, right in the center, nine o'clock and three o'clock. 
I often have instructions to stop with the main mark at four o'clock. And in my mind, that's about, you know, it's roughly here between the cable post and the side of the side gear. And then I often also provide instructions to stop with a particular mark at the break in the yarn feeder. And so I mean right here, uh, where the yarn goes out through the little split in the yarn feeder. If we then look at the cylinder itself, there's a whole page on the Dina Bean site for marking your cylinder and it has diagrams for every size cylinder for how many needles go between the marks. And of course you can use any color you want. On our videos, it's always consistent that black is the main mark, red is the halfway mark, and then there are four target needles marked and on ours, those are always pink. So there are two here at the top and two here at the bottom. And those are the ones you use for when you're making heels and toes, you would decrease down to those points and then back out again. And then there are wedge heel targets, which primarily we use for the Susan sock pattern. If you wanna do a little bit of a, a, a deeper heel like that wedge heel is. The final reference I use often is I will say to go to the right or left of a particular mark. And I always mean when looking at the cylinder from the outside. So if this is the main mark and I'm referencing the needle to the right of the main mark, it's this needle. Okay, so the one to the right when you're looking from the outside of the cylinder. Visit us at deanandbean.com and please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.